Hello students, welcome back to Career Power Hyderabad, powered by Auto 24-7. Students, today we will see the important MCQs. But before going into the MCQ session, please subscribe our YouTube channel, share the channel with your friends, like our videos, also join our Telegram channel for the PDF and do download the Career Power Hyderabad app. We provide coaching for bank, SSC, RRB as well as for SI Conestable. So do download the app, we will provide the link in the description as well as comment section. So we are starting, we are relaunching our offline classes from 22nd July. So please uh, come to our uh, institute, visit the institute. We will uh, provide the address at the end of the PPT. So uh, end of the video. So we will see the important MCQs today. We will go to the first MCQ today. So Nelson Mandela International Day is observed annually on. Nelson Mandela International Day is observed annually on July 18th. So Nelson Mandela who is considered the father of South Africa. So his birthday is celebrated as the Nelson Mandela International Day. So the day marks the contribution of peace uh, through his involvement uh, in resolving uh, conflicts, promoting human rights, international democracy and addressing the racial issues. So he is a face of the anti apartheid movement in South Africa. So he spent nearly 27 years of his life, valuable life in jail only for the dream of a free and fair society. So Gandhi and Mandela, they were similar in the uh, struggle against this oppression, colonial oppression and they were considered the father of nations. So Mandela received the Nobel Peace Prize uh, in 1993 and he is also the first black president of South Africa and also he received Bharat Ratna from India in 1990. So please remember all these points about Mandela. So the next question, which of the following countries has agreed to form a new quad grouping on enhancing the regional connectivity? So which of the following countries have agreed to form a new quad grouping on the enhancing regional connectivity? The answer is uh, USA, Afghanistan, Pakistan and Uzbekistan. So USA, Afghanistan, Pakistan and Uzbekistan, they uh, formed a new quad. So this quad was announced by President Biden. So this quad uh, is mainly during the time of where US is uh, pulling out of uh, Afghanistan and there is uh, rising tensions, rising violence in Afghanistan. So this squad will enhance the regional connectivity and uh, improve the country of Afghanistan. So this is the map of Afghanistan. This is the country of Afghanistan bordered by Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Iran, Pakistan, Tajikistan. So now Afghanistan, Uzbekistan and Pakistan with USA are forming a new quad. So they are very near to India. India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan. So very near to India. Indian neighbors. They are all Indian neighbors. Okay. So, US State Department has said that these uh, quad will help in the inter-regional trade routes as well as to cooperate among themselves to expand the trade to strengthen the business ties. So, these are all the benefits of the quad. So, please remember US capital Washington DC, US currency, US dollar, United States dollar, Afghanistan capital Kabul, Afghanistan currency, Afghanist Afghan Afghani. Pakistan capital Islamabad, Pakistan currency, Pakistani rupee, Uzbekistan capital Takshin, Uzbekistan currency, Uzbekistani som. Please remember all these points. Next question, Google announced it's the second Google cloud region in which of the following places in India. So Google announced it's second Google cloud region in which of the following places in India. The answer is Delhi NCR. So Google launches its second cloud region in Delhi NCR which will Saru India as well as the Asia Pacific region. So because of having the second cloud in India, it will create low latency and high performance mainly on cloud based works. So this is the 10th in Asia Pacific and second after Mumbai. In India, it is the second one. Mumbai is the first place having Google cloud infrastructure. So this will improve the business continuity and also it will maintain the data sovereignty because the data is protected, saved in India itself. So total there are 26 Google Cloud regions in the entire world. So Google established in 1998 Google headquarter California and you know the Google uh, CEO Sundar Pichai who is an Indian origin. So please remember all these points. The next question India's first monk fruit cultivation access recently began in which of the following states. So India's first monk fruit cultivation access recently began in which of the following states. The answer is Himachal Pradesh. The answer is Himachal Pradesh. So the cultivation of monk fruit uh, which origina originates from China, it was started in Kullu district Himachal Pradesh. This fruit was introduced by the Institute of Himalayan Bioresource Technology. So they introduced this fruit in India. So this fruit is mainly uh, used as a natural sweetener, non-caloric uh, natural sweetener. So 50 samplings will be planted in the farm of uh, Manokullar. 
so in the raizan village of the kullu district so here uh, they say that they estimate that there will be a economic benefit of nearly 3 lakh to 3.5 lakh per hectare and this monk fruit is a perennial crop which will take nearly 4 to 5 years to grow so it takes a lot of time so this fruiting on the crop starts uh, in 8 to 9 months after germination so it prefers mountainous area mainly temperatures of 16 to 20 degrees and humid conditions so seed germination is very slow and low that is why a seed germination technique is developed by the Institute of Himalayan Bioresources uh, uh, where they will increase the germination rate and reduce the germination time. Also remember Himachal Pradesh Governor Rajender Vishwanath Alekar, so newly appointed Governor Himachal Pradesh CM Jairam Thakur. So please remember all these questions and also the Institute of Himalayan Bioresources Technology established in 1983 located in Palampur, Kangra district, Himachal Pradesh. So it is engaged in various research aspects of the Himalayan bioresources and the modern biology. So please remember all these points, very very important. The next question, according to the recent World Wildlife Fund United Nations uh, Environment Program report, what percentage of India's tiger ranges are outside the protected areas? So what percent of India's tiger ranges are outside the protected areas? The answer is 35%. So the report says 35% of India's tiger ranges currently lie outside the protected areas. So the report is called the future for all a need of human wildlife coexistence. So the report said that the marine and territorial uh, territorial so marine and territorial protected areas cover only 9.6% globally. So it says only it covers 9.6% globally. So with most of the protected areas disconnected from each other. So these uh, species they depend on human dominated spaces for their survival. So these protected areas they play a very key role in their survival like these predators, tigers, lions, these protected areas help them to survive. If they can't live in this human life, they can't live in this concrete jungle, they need a pure jungle to survive. So apart from tigers, 40% of lions, 70% of elephants, they also lie outside the protected region. So very bad news. So the report of Ministry of Environment, the data from Ministry of Environment says, 500 elephants were killed between 2014-15 and 2018-19. In the same period, 2,361 people also were killed in this conflict with elephants. And also the global wildlife populations, uh, they've fallen in an average of 68% from 1970. So there is a decreasing uh, wildlife. We need to check this because it will be create ecological, imb ecological imbalance. Okay. So please remember about the World Life Fund for Nature established in 1961, mainly for the wilderness preservation and reduction of human impact on environment, headquartered in Gland, Switzerland. United Nations Environment Program, so mainly which coordinates uh, uh, responses to the environmental issues, established in 1972, headquartered in Nairobi, Kenya. Please remember all these points. The next question, which of the following institutes recently developed artificial intelligence algorithm called NB driver to spot cancer causing mutations? So which institute has uh, developed this AI algorithm NB driver? The answer is IIT Madras. So IIT Madras has developed this neighborhood driver which is an AI tool which can analyze the cancer causing mutations in cells. So this uh, researchers in IIT Madras they created a mathematical model based on AI. So this model will spot changes in cell that cause cancer. So this algorithm will study the DNA structures. It characterizes the genetic changes. Okay. So this uh, neighborhood driver was developed by IIT Madras which was established in Chennai in the year 1959 with the help of West Germany government. So please remember all these points, very, very important. Next question, who among the following wrote the book? The India Story. So the India Story is a book written by Bhimal Jalan. So Bhimal Jalan is the former RBI governor. So his book focuses on Indian economic history and aims to provide lessons for the future of India's political economy. He traces the economic policies from 1991 to 2019. So this book is simply about India's economy. So if you see the details about Bhimal Jalan, he is the former governor of RBI as well as finance secretary and the chairman of economic advisory council to the prime minister. He is also the Indian representative to the IMF and World Bank. So these are all the positions, elite positions held by uh, Mr. Bhimal Jalan. He is also the author of the book India Then and Now, India Ahead, Politics Trumps Economics. So these are all the books authored by Bhimal Jalan. So please remember Bhimal Jalan, the India story. The next question, which of the following has recently struck a deal to acquire cyber security firm Risk IQ? 
So which company has acquired Risk IQ? The answer is Microsoft. So Microsoft has reached a deal to acquire Risk IQ, which is a San Francisco based cybersecurity services company. So Risk IQ will join the Microsoft suit of cloud security products like Microsoft 365 Defender, Azure Defender, Azure Sentinel. So these are the current uh, security services provided by Microsoft. Now Risk IQ will join this uh, team. So uh, the estimated deal was uh, rupees 500 million that by uh, a, a report uh, report says that a 500 million deal. So Microsoft nearly has uh, 3500 employees who are working in security. So recently also last month they acquired Reform Labs and last year they acquired CyberX. These are all the security companies acquired by Microsoft. So Microsoft is focusing more on, more on cyber security to enhance its products. So Microsoft CEO and newly appointed chairman Satya Nadella. Microsoft headquarter Redmond, Washington State, United States of America, it is Washington State. And Microsoft established in 1930, sorry, 1975. The next question, which of the following state recently announced to introduce one block, one product scheme? So which state has recently announced one block, one product scheme? The answer is Haryana. So Haryana state government has announced this scheme, mainly to encourage and promote the small industries in rural areas. So under this scheme, state government plans to connect every block of the state with some industrial vision. So state government is planning to introduce this uh, in currently in 137 blocks of the state. And arrangements for common service, lab testing, packaging, transportation, accounting uh, will happen in the cluster itself. So these are all the benefits of the scheme. So Haryana newly appointed governor Bandaru Dattatreya, Haryana chief minister Manohar Lal Qatar. So please uh, remember all these points, very, very important. Next, Common High Court of Jammu and Kashmir Ladakh has been renamed as the Common High Court of Jammu and Kashmir Ladakh has been renamed as the High Court of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. The High Court of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. So earlier it was called the High Court of Jammu and Kashmir. So it is now called the High Court of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. So this order was notified by the Department of Justice, so Ministry of Law and Justice. So the current Minister of Law and Justice, the newly appointed Minister of Law and Justice, Kiran Rijuju. So please remember Kiran Rijuji is the new Minister of Law and Justice. So President Ramnath Kovind has signed this Jammu and Kashmir Reorganization Removal of Difficulties Order 2021. So according to this order, the change, uh, there is an, a name change of the High Court. So this High Court was established in 1928 by then Maharaja of Jammu and Kashmir. So it used to shift between the two capitals, uh, the summer and winter capitals, Srinagar and Jammu. So this court has currently 17 judges. And the current Chief Justice of High Court is Justice Pankaj Mittal. So please remember all these points. Also, Lieutenant Governor of Jammu and Kashmir, Manoj Sinha. Lieutenant Governor of Ladakh, Radha Krishna Mathur. Please remember all these points. Next question. Indian Olympic Association named who among the following as the press attache of the Indian Olympic contingent? So, Indian Olympic Association has named who among the following as the press attache of the Indian Olympic contingent? The answer is... B.K. Sinha. The answer is B.K. Sinha. So Indian Olympic Association has appointed the retired IPS officer B.K. Sinha who will perform the dual role of security as well as press attache of the country's contingent at the Tokyo Games which will begin on July 23rd. Sinha is a former DGP as well as the recipient of President Police Medal. So he will look over the entire security and press arrangements at the uh, Olympics. So Indian Olympic Association is a body responsible for selecting athletes to the Olympic Games, Asian Games, other international meets and also for the Commonwealth Games. So please remember all these points. So this year for to Tokyo Olympics, a 228 strong contingent is going off which 119 are athletes. So Indian Olympic Association headquarter Delhi formed in 1929 and the current president is Narendra Batra. So please remember all these points very very important for your examination. Olympics is in you, so more number of sports questions will come in examination. Focus on sports, focus on Olympics. So who will receive the Olympic laurel at the Tokyo Games 2021? So who will receive the Olympic laurel at the Tokyo Games 2021? The answer is Mohammed Yunus. So Mohammed Yunus is the Bangladeshi Nobel Peace Prize winner. So he will receive the Olympic laurel at the Tokyo Games opening ceremony. So he created the Yunus Sports Hub. Uh, which promotes the theory of development through sports. He is often called the world banker to the poor. So he is a pioneer micro lender who launched this Grameen Bank in Bangladesh who reduced poverty across the globe with his extensive work uh, 
uh, in the banking sector as well as his work towards sports. So he will be given at the Tokyo 2020 opening ceremony. So this Olympic laurel is created five years ago to recognize uh, the endeavors uh, in culture, education, peace and development through sport. So you can see in the picture, this is the Olympic laurel. Okay. So which is uh, placed on the Olympic stone, uh, which is uh, brought from the Olympic side. So Olympic laurel, it is a Olympic laurel. So this Olympic laurel was first given in 2016 Rio Games to former Kenyan Olympian Kimcho Kino, who opened uh, the children's school and a children's home and a athletes training center in Kenya. So for his efforts towards uh, sports and efforts towards development through sports, uh, so Kenyan Olympian Kim Cho Kinno was given this uh, Olympic laurel in 2016. So please remember all these points. So next, who won the British Grand Prix 2021? So who won the British Grand Prix 2021? Lewis Hamilton. So Lewis Hamilton, he retained his British Grand Prix 2021. So he won for the eighth time. So it is the eighth time he is winning this British Grand Prix, his home uh, country. So this event was held in July 18 at the Silverstone Circuit in United Kingdom. This is his fourth win in this season in this uh, Formula 1 Championship season. So it is also a very important milestone because it is the 99th win of this uh, of, uh, he, of his entire career. So please remember Lewis Hamilton, the British Grand Prix winner. Second ranked by Charles Leclerc of Monaco and third ranked by Walter, uh, Wal Walter e. Bottas of Finland. So Mark Westerfen, who is a... Uh, uh, like gaining uh, a lot of prominence in the sport, uh, he crashed out on the first lap. So, Mark Westerman failed to get the first position. It is now Lewis Hamilton who got the first position. So, this 2021 FIFA, uh, sorry, FIA Formula 1 World Championship is a motor racing championship mainly for the Formula 1 cars. So, it will be contested over 23 Grand Prix. So, in this entire one year, 23 Grand Prix will be held across the world. So, one of them is the British Grand Prix. We already discussed Austrian, Hungarian, all these things. So, Styrian. So, you need to buy hard everything. Very, very important sport, Formula 1, because uh, this entire series is happening. The next question, the Knight of Knowing Nothing won the Aidor uh, Award for Best Documentary at the 74th Keynes Film Festival. Name the director of the documentary. The Knight of Knowing Nothing, this uh, particular documentary has won the Best Documentary, the Aidor Golden Eye Award. In the Keynes Film Festival, who is the director of this uh, film? Payal Kapadia. So, Payal Kapadia is the director of this film. So, she won the best documentary at the 74th Keynes Film Festival. So, in 2017 also, uh, she entered into Keynes uh, with her short film Afternoon Clouds. But she couldn't receive the award. But this year, she received the award for her uh, documentary, A Night of Knowing Nothing. So this Night of Knowing Nothing is, a, uh, is, is about a story of a university student in India who writes letters to his unstrained lover while he is away. So this is a story about a girl writing a letters to her lover. Okay. So this award was instituted in 2015 by La Chambre, uh, the French speaking writer society uh, in collaboration with the Keynes Film Festival. The Keynes Film Festival is an annual film festival held in Keynes, France, which will preview all the films of all genres including documentaries all around the world. So, which was established in 1946. It is one of the big three major European film festivals, along with the Venice uh, Film Festival in Italy, Berlin Film Festival in Germany, and also one of the big five, uh, where you will find the Toronto International Film Festival in Canada and Sunday's Film Festival in USA. So, these are all the top five film festivals in Europe and as well as in the world. So, in this Keynes Film Festival, our uh, Payal Kapadia has won this best documentary award. Okay, so please remember. The last question, who won the Cannes top prize Palm d'Or for her film Titan? So who, who won this uh, top prize Cannes uh, top prize Palm d'Or for her film Titana? So the answer is, so uh, the answer is Julie, uh, Julia Dokono, uh, Dokono, So Julia, Julia Dokohono has won this uh, Palm door for her film Titani. Okay, so please remember. So Julie Dokonoho has won this uh, Keynes top prize, a uh, Palm door for her film Titani. So this Keynes film festival was concluded on 17 July 2021, and she is the second woman to win this award. The first uh, woman to win this award is Jane uh, Campion in uh, 1993. Also, uh, 
uh, the honorary palm door was given to jody foster and marco bellocchio so marco bellocchio and jody foster were given this honorary palm door so please remember these are all french names so quite difficult to remember but please try to remember these names very very important Cannes film festival so the entire list of Cannes film festival uh, we gave in this uh, pdf so please by heart all these uh, Cannes film festival uh, list very very important but please by heart the indian uh, best documentary uh, by kyle uh, pile kapadia as well as uh, the Cannes Cannes top prize uh, palm door which was given to julie dokohono so please remember all these uh, points very very important okay so this pdf is available in our uh, telegram channel so do join our telegram channel also join our uh, uh, also i mean subscribe our youtube channel for further videos like the videos share the videos with your friends also download the career power hyderabad app we provide coaching for bank ssc rrb as well as for si constable so do download the app we will provide the link in the description so our offline classes are restarting tomorrow that is, that is on 22nd july so come visit the institute so on the uh, on the screen you can see the uh, branches as well as numbers so do contact our branches do visit the branch uh, we provide best coaching for bank ssc rrb so india's top institute career power so you need to come to this institute because you need a job you need career power so career power duty is to provide job to you our job is to provide a job to you so please uh, uh, come uh, come and visit the institute so that's it for today we'll meet in the next session thank you students